Hello and welcome to The Fourth Wave, a podcast named after the fourth wave of feminism that aims to inspire, empower, inform, and celebrate the woman of today. Each episode, we will give you strategies and ideas for living a life as your most empowered self. This week, we will talk about the importance of getting to know yourself, my book, Letters to Women Like Me, and a self-empowerment booster tip that always leaves us feeling powerful and able to take on the day. I'm Mirtha Michelle, a best-selling author and poet. I am your host and co-founder of The Fourth Wave, and I'm here in Los Angeles. It's actually getting a little cold, and I'm alongside my co-founder, Jamie Barada. That's me, Jamie Barada, an entertainment and fashion attorney living in Los Angeles. It is getting cold. Well, cold for Los Angeles is... Yeah, cold for us. ...is like um, 70 degrees. <laughs> no, no, 60. 60. <laughs> Um, All right. Well, as you know, by now, we like to start off our show by sharing strategies that help us feel a sense of empowerment in our daily lives, things that work for us and hopefully can work for you too. And we love it most when these strategies and tips come from our listeners. So please write to us with what works for you. You can write us at info at theivywave.com or you can DM us on Instagram, which a lot of people tend to do, or leave us comments or on Twitter at the Ivy Wave. This week, our Try This at Home is an exercise Mirtha actually discusses in her recent book, Letters to Women Like Me, and it has to do with the idea of asking yourself the question, who am I? And that might sound like an easy task or a simple task, but it's actually a question. I think that if a lot of us were to ask ourselves, we wouldn't be able to answer right away. Um, And I really like this exercise and just getting to know yourself a little bit better. So, Mirtha, since this is your exercise, why don't you tell us a little bit about it um, and kind of the questions you went through to discover more about yourself? Okay, so this is the part of the book. This is the beginning in the preface that I, I am sharing how I came to write letters to women like me. When I had uh, uh, experienced uh, a breakup that I wrote about in Letters to the Men I Have Loved, my first book, I had to take the time to go on a self-discovery journey. And one of the things that I realized was that I was not the same person I was when I entered that relationship. I had changed a lot. You know, you, you, you evolve depending on the relationships you have in your life we are all uh we we all evolve at different times and i had to ask myself who am i like who was i at that point in my life i no longer was the girl i was when i entered that relationship i no longer was the person that that i felt he had fallen in love with or fell out of love with. And I needed to learn myself. So one of the things that I realized is that we hardly ever ask each other ourselves questions. Right. You meet someone and you are interested in that person and you ask them questions. That's how you get to know them, right? You're going to ask them, oh, you know, why, why do you like this color? Or where do you like to vacation? Or you like working out? You know, when you're interested in someone, you ask them questions. Mm-hmm. Rarely, people ask themselves questions. Right. So I realized that I, I needed to ask myself all the questions that I would normally ask someone that I was interested in. Yeah. And, and, but that, that was the first question I asked myself, mm-hmm. the who am I? Mm-hmm. And when I asked myself that question, I started asking myself other questions. Like, for I'll give you an example. I asked, my, I asked myself, why, Mirtha, do you love the color black so much? So I started answering what I, the reason why I love the color black. Mm-hmm. I love the color black because it's mysterious, it's powerful, it's elegant. And then now if someone were to ask me, Mirtha, why do you love the color black so much? I don't have to hesitate. I know the answer. Mm -hmm. I know why I like the color black. Right. Why I wear the color black so often. And 
it's I learned why I like the color black. So it's like, imagine if we did that with e- every area of our lives. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. It's almost like dating yourself for a little yes. bit. Yes. Well, this is what Letters to Women Like Me is all about. It's, mm-hmm. I understood that the most honest relationship I can ever have first begins with me, with myself. That's the most important relationship you'll ever have. It's with yourself. If you're not whole on your own, you can't possibly give to others. And at least at least not the way you a hundred percent. Yeah. And um and that was the the biggest uh lesson I learned after that relationship, I would say. I'm very thankful for it. Mm-hmm. And that's what drove me to uh put together this book because I feel that a lot of times a lot of people they don't know themselves. I think the biggest issue in society is identity issues. Mm-hmm. And you pick up a lot of traits. A lot of times when you're in relationships, you'll pick up traits or habits. interests, habits, yeah, that the other person has to the point where you don't realize, oh, you're only eating, you only eat steak medium well because that's how they order it. Or you only eat your eggs like this because that's how someone else orders it. Um, yeah, when you're spending so much time with someone, mm-hmm. you become one. <laughs> Right. What's that song? Remember that song? Was it a Spice Girl song? Um, I'm Becoming sure. One. <laughs> I'm sure uh, there are many songs like that. Um, but I yeah, I really it was a Spice Girl song. <laughs> I really like this exercise, though. Um, and then it and then it kind of prompts you if you don't know the answer to it, it prompts you to explore to explore to get to know yourself. I, the, a lot of times people, they, they always tell you, well, you know, you have to love yourself. You have to uh, get to know yourself. You have to spend time with yourself. But no one knows how to do that. And I realize that asking questions is the easiest step to get, getting to that place in your life mm-hmm. of learning yourself. Um, well, let us know if you tried this at home. Sit down and ask yourself a series of questions that revolve around this theme of who am I? And let us know if it helps you feel a sense of empowerment in your daily lives. If you can't come up with questions, Martha goes through a series of them in um, the beginning of her book. So you can start there and you can get in touch with us on Twitter or drop us an email at info at the ivywave.com. Or just go to our website for contact info, links, and everything else related to this podcast and let us know um, how the exercise went for you. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, this week I'm really excited to talk to you about my most recent book, Letters to Women Like Me. Now, a lot of times people ask me, which is your favorite book of yours you know, which one's more special? Mm-hmm. And I always tell them, it's like choosing between your kids. It's like they're all special. Right. But Letters to Women Like Me is very special for me because I feel that it's such an empowering book. And I, I feel that it was like a gift that I'm giving, especially younger women. Mm-hmm. Simply because I'm sharing those moments in which I had to ask myself, I asked myself a series of questions and how I learned from those conversations I had with the women in my life. And this book deals a lot, especially when I turned the age of 30, that a lot of times you're told uh, the age of 30, you're old, you're already, you're past your prime. Uh, Society has, has a way of having placed all this pressure on women and age and time and and I realized when I was writing this book that the age of 30 is actually extremely empowering and I felt the strongest I have ever felt and I felt smart I felt mm-hmm. beautiful I felt powerful because I felt that for the first time I actually knew what I wanted I I knew where I was going and I wanted to explain, you know, I wanted to express that in this book because a lot of times women don't have uh, that support system that tells them, hey, 
getting older is okay. This is a time that you actually learn yourself. I think when, when you're in your early 20s, you're confused and trying to figure things out. But this book is very special for me because of that. Also, I share, I share many different stories in the book. But one of the things that I, I love about the book is that it, has, uh, it, it shows how empowering you can be as a single woman as well. We get so much pressure of wanting to be in a relationship or, or having to be in a relationship. Oh, by a certain age, you, you know, you're supposed to have kids, etc. And the world is different now. Mm-hmm. It's a modern world. The, the rules are, have changed. It's no longer uh, the world that our, that our parents were raised in. It's, it's a world in which you can be an independent woman and extremely satisfied. And I, I express in the book that I realize that, if anything, my mistake was committing to someone else before committing to myself. Right. The relationship you have with yourself is the most important relationship you will ever have. Before your uh, your family, before if you're religious if, with God or any deity that you believe in, it is the most important relationship is with yourself. I like that because you talk a lot about in your book just placing being okay with the idea of the journey and not having to rush to get to like finding who it is you're supposed to be with. Cause when you do that, you, a lot of times will pick the wrong person. Oh my God. Yeah. Right? I have it, in one of the, the chapters of the book, I call it shameful loneliness. Oh, <laughs> shameful. Loneliness. I like that title because you know, how can you feel lonely in a city with so many things to do and, when you have friends or, you know, if you have family, it's, we have all this pressure of needing to be with, with a partner mm-hmm. so we can feel complete and, and it's, it's a lie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can feel complete all on your own. Everyone else in your life, whether it's a romantic relationship or a platonic one, Everyone else is an addition. It's an add-on. It's like saying the icing on the cake. Right. But you are the cake. Right. You are the cake. And that's one of the things that I realized. Sometimes, uh, you know, especially when you have uh, friends that are married with kids, sometimes you you have the, the pressure of, wanting to be in that, you know, in that place as well. One right, day. definitely. And I realized, why am I rushing? The idea of rushing into marriage and kids when I haven't even spent enough time alone. Right. And you want to, it's like you imagine, want- imagine you, you will marry someone and be with that person for 30 years. But then you can't even tell your kids that you were single for one year. <laughs> right. And it's this thing. It's like you every time you meet someone who might be interesting or that you are the, the slightest bit uh, have some type of connection with, you think it's an opportunity. You need to jump on it and take advantage of it when not some opportunities are distraction or, mm-hmm. or some, some, some uh, moments like that present themselves like an opportunity, but they're really a distraction. And... If you're moving fast, you're not going to be able to kind of decipher between what's really an opportunity, what's what's meant for me, and what's really just a distraction. And that's how you get, I mean, we could just go on and on about this, but that's how you get then caught up in these relationships in these for like relationships two years. That are really not going anywhere. Right. You know, some, some, some relationships are just supposed to be moments, moments of like maybe great laughter. And not a two, three year relationship <laughs> that set you back. <laughs> right. Some things are just meant to be an interaction or a conversation or not, right. Not everything needs to be a relationship. But I think that the more you know yourself, the easier it's going to be to figure out 
you know, what's when, meant. When you take the time to learn yourself, it's the it's like the biggest investment you can do with your own life. Mm-hmm. And some you, some of you guys listening might be asking, but Martha, Jimmy, how do I get to? How do I really learn myself? Mm-hmm. Okay, I, like I said, you ask yourself questions, but take a journal. Mm-hmm. You know, start a journal. Ask yourself these questions and write them, and you know, and write your answers down. You don't have to publish it like how I do, but but take the time to like study yourself. Why not? You take the time to learn other people and you're not going to learn yourself. Who's mm-hmm. more important, you or the other person? And a lot of, but a lot of times people are lazy. They do not want to put in the work. Right. And we're all, it's weird. We're all about bettering ourselves, right? Or not, not all of us, but I think it's easier to fall into the trend of bettering yourself, like going to yoga, working out, eating well, but it's very different from learning who you are. Do you know how many hours girls will spend on YouTube learning how to contour, (laughs) but they cannot take 15 minutes and write on a journal and face face their demons? (laughs) I know. I'm telling you, it's all about what what you care about. And it's my wish, you know, especially when I wrote this book, it's my wish that women took their time to get to know themselves Mm -hmm. because it will create a confidence that they perhaps lacked. I know that when I took the time to learn myself, it created confidence it also allowed me to accept myself in certain areas, accepting my flaws. Mm-hmm. Once you accept your flaws and you accept yourself, that's when you really begin to love yourself. Mm-hmm. There isn't any self-love until there's self-acceptance. Mm-hmm. And to do that, you have to learn yourself. I, I'll give you a perfect example. I... Um, uh, one of the things that I had to accept about myself, for example, my body type. You know, it's like I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a super skinny girl, and I'm not super tall, and I know a lot of models, and that sucks. You know, I, I had to like <laughs> accept it. You know what? You're not five ten, Martha. You know, and. And that's something I had to accept myself. If I don't accept myself, who's going who's gonna to love me more than I can love myself? I right. know that was a very shallow, shallow example. <laughs> but as women, we are very hard on ourselves, especially with our appearances. Yeah, definitely. Whether it's your body type, your skin, your hair, etc. It's The beauty business, that's the reason why it's one of the biggest businesses, because... Women are constantly trying to improve the way they look. Right. But true beauty begins of how you feel inside. I know it sounds cliche, but inner beauty reflects on everything else. And, but I had, to, I had to take the time and accept myself. But that only began when I started learning myself. Right. When I started learning my wants, my desires, what I did, didn't like, what I, what I did like. And, and, and that created confidence right. and in ultimate, areas that I lacked. And ultimately, it will help you find you know, the person that's right for you. It's not a, so it's not about that, right? We want to learn about ourselves because that's really the most important relationship we have. Well, regardless of you, you know, if you end up meeting a great person um, or not, once once you've already taken the steps to learn yourself, the reality is that we attract who we are. Mm -hmm. If you are taking the time to learn yourself, you're raising your vibrations like so much higher mm-hmm. when you work on yourself. And you're going to attract that type of person in your life. Right. Someone who is, is aware 
of the importance of, of being whole. That actually leads me to um, our self-empowerment booster tip that uh, we like to leave you guys with. And I, I, ha- I couldn't figure out what I was going to like say for today's, but then you just saying that gave me a great idea um, to share with our listeners. And it came from this Reiki that Mirtha and I go to from time to time, Wendy. And do you remember when she had us, so she had, she told us basically in terms of knowing what you're looking for in a partner. So we, we just spent the episode talking about getting to know yourself better. And then sometimes you also need to take the time to get to know what you're looking for in someone else. Sometimes we don't do that. And then you're just dating, you know, the first person that yeah, comes your like, way. Oh, he's cute. Why not? So she had told us, and I really love this exercise in a journal or on a piece of paper, create two columns and on one side, write all the qualities that you're looking for in a person. Not physical attributes. Right. Qualities. Qualities. And it could be a list of 10 things. It can be a list of 100 things. And then the really interesting part about it is go through that list and in that right column, put a little cross or check for those qualities that you yourself do not possess. So let's say, I remember when I did mine, one of them was patience. Like I I want patience in my partner, but I, at the time really- You lacked patience. Lacked it. (laughs) So that got an X and it kind of goes back to what you were just saying, you know, before we started sharing the booster tip that um, it's interesting how we'll look for qualities in other people, but we ourselves- might not even possess it. So how do you expect to attract that? To attract it. If we aren't giving, you know, we don't have it ourselves. So part of that exercise was, okay, look at then what you, what has marks next to it. Work on those within yourself. It's really interesting you say that. I actually had, I'm going to share, I had a, um, a reader write to me and she told me that when she read letters to women like me, I, she started taking the time to learn herself. And she said that she changed so much. And then now she entered a relationship with an amazing man. Mm -hmm. And she's like that she doesn't feel that she would have been able to even see how amazing he was if she wasn't in the state of Mm self-awareness that she entered after reading letters to women like me. Right. And that made me so happy because it's exactly what I wanted that the reader will take from the book. Yeah. I, I, am, I am not a perfect human being, but one thing that I have learned is that if I, share, if I share my mistakes, if I share my lessons, my vulnerability, other people will be able to grow and learn from it. And, and I think that's the biggest gift I can give sharing, sharing uh, my lessons and, and yeah. the things that I've learned. And what, what better time to read this book and take the time to sit down with ourselves than now, right? Especially entering a new year. Yeah. So thank you, Mirtha, for sharing with us. We got our own little exclusive sit down <laughs> with the author of Letters to Women Like Me. So that's it for this episode of The Fourth Wave. Remember to try this at home. Ask yourself, who am I? Start a journal. Let us know if you tried it and if it worked for you. Get in touch with us. Mirtha's on Instagram at Mirtha Michelle and I'm Jamie underscore Barada. And our email address is info at the ivywave.com. Send us your comments and feedback. Until next time, I'm Jamie Barada. And I'm Mirtha Michelle. Thanks for joining us.